Round 19, Warriors absolutely cooked the eels over there at Combat Stadium. Let's take a look how this one played out. Hey team, welcome back to the Warrior Holic. Outstanding comeback from the boys after that loss against South last week. Absolutely cooking those eels. Outstanding, particularly in the first half there. Really, really proud. Great that we're back on the wagon. Back up there in sixth place. So overall, you know, a bit of a rough start there. A few too many areas. But I think the boys were just really trying to play high intensity, fast paced football to kind of um, wear out those big power of forwards early on there. You know, resulting in a lot of mistakes um, that, you know, probably a little bit uncharacteristic. Um, from the, the power perspective, I thought they played, you know, okay in the, in the first sort of 20 minutes or so there. I thought Arcee was outstanding, you know, and a losing team on the back of a pack getting pushed back, you know, showed a lot of really good signs. I think he um, may even be able to hold his place there when Dylan Brown comes back. Be interesting to see how that plays out. Thought their, both their centres, as I expected, um, Penasini and Simonson had really good games, both hard to contain at times. I think they both resulted from most of our uh, tackle breaks and ineffective tackles there. Um, really strong on their feet, good fins. Um, I thought Russell at fullback, um, for a guy who doesn't normally play there, I don't think he's played there in first grade before, he really held his own, um, you know, diffused all the kicks that came his way, was really solid again on the back of a retreating pack there. Um, Paulo probably didn't have his best game there, you know, not too much, you know, to back him up there, um, but still, it's great to see that our boys dominated them. From the Warriors' perspective, um, you know, I think we did go a little bit too hard, too fast, too early. You know, I think while it's great to play a really fast brand of footy, execution's vital. Um, I'll get on to the number of errors in a moment. But overall, I thought, you know, the level of intensity we were able to play with, we didn't look fatigued at all through the game, whereas their pack looked pretty much, you know, shattered towards the end of the first half, much less in the second half there. So it definitely shows that our fitness is um, holding up to, uh, you know, a fast brand of footy over there in a relatively warm condition. So... Really hoping that it's a decent day when we come up against the Sharks next Sunday up there because we don't seem to be the best in the wet weather at the moment. But anyway, let's take a look at the stats and see how it all sort of broke down um, from that perspective. So score-wise, we had 46-10 to us, 8 tries to 2, you know, pretty dominant in both halves there. Um, Possession-wise, only 56 to 44. They had a lot of possession in our half, but what that really showed is we're able to step up and rely on our defense, you know, the amount of sets that we gave up into, our, you know, in our red zone there, but still, we just really didn't look like they were going to penetrate us, so that was a really great sign that we're able to deliver that and not get fatigued and continue to play for the 80 minutes. Um, completion rate, 73 versus 69, that's a little bit better than last week, I think we're down around the 63%, but still not our norm up around the high sort of 70s into the 80s there from us so something we're really going to have to improve before we come up against the um the sharks there um you know run meters we ran for more than 500 meters in them um things that stood out 12 tackle break uh, sorry 12 line breaks here versus three tackle breaks 38 to 37 so they got a, got plenty of those but like i said i think a lot of that was from their centers able to sort of bounce in and out of tackles and sort of drift across the field there but we sort of stood back and sort of let them um, drift rather than all sort of running up and panicking. So while, you know, we did miss it, miss them, or there were some ineffective tackles, I think that was in a, um, in a controlled manner, particularly within our red zone. You know, we didn't panic. We just sort of, you know, held our line and just waited for them to come back to us. Um, kick return meters there is a massive difference, you know, 97 for them versus 192 for us. I think we saw that both of their wingers were pretty ineffective um, all night. Lumi Lumi had a couple of okay runs there, but Mike Receiver was pretty much non-existent. Um, the ball just didn't get out his way. You know, they didn't do a heck of a lot running the ball off their line. So it really does go to show that I think we have, you know, particularly our back three there, the work that we do off our own try line is probably second to none. Probably right up there with Penrith um, if, if we're going to compare them to against anyone there. So really great to see that that continued on. Um, passes here, which is quite interesting, looking at the offloads, eight to us to six to them. They've got the most offloads in the comp. We've got the second to least um, over the whole year, but we're able to get more off, um, offloads away there. Um, adding for Noah Blake, I think it was three that he got. We'll see that in a moment. 
Uh, other key stats there, um, you know, kicking slightly more, but you know, not our longest kicking game. That's probably a reflection. We had some relatively good field position there. Good kick defusal. Good to see a bit more variety from SJ last night, not just kicking into the one corner. You know, he put the ball on the ground a couple of times. He put it into the corners. He put it down the middle. So it was a great little bit of variety there compared to last week where it was a little bit predictable. Defense, um, both teams up in the high, or, you know, mid to high 87, uh, 80% there. Um, 87.23 for us, 86.7 for them there. Um, key for me, while we did have less than them, um, 37 missed tackles was a lot. Um, 38 for them is more, but neither of us would be too happy about that. And effective tackles, 11 for us as well, was not ideal. Um, biggest one for me to worry about coming out of that game was the errors. 16 errors, that was the most I think we've had all season. Um, you know, I think again it's just getting that balance between playing high tempo footy and not just getting frantic for the sake of it. Um, you know, I think a couple of those ones, I'm not sure what was happening with old Dallin. He sort of overran his... Um, the guy inside him a couple of times there, Barnett and Barry both flicked it onto what should have been a perfect position for him running onto the ball, both of which could have resulted in tries, but for some reason he was actually right level with them, if not slightly in front of them. So little things like that, you know, the plays of the balls, you know, not things you would normally see the Dallin make a mistake on, so hopefully we don't see him have another night like that. Um, penalties, we actually won that for once, 5-4, to four, that's not bad to see. Just the one ruck infringement against us, one against inside the 10. You know, I think that was probably ref relatively, um, you know, flexibly <laughs> by the refs on the weekend. I don't think they were overly anal about the 10 and so forth. So um, that one for Jackson Ford, though, um, being about two metres in front of SJ kicking the, the drop out there, made him look like a bit of a mug. But overall, you know, I think the stats sort of, you know, they don't reflect how dominant we were on attack. But I think Parra, you know, were really able to control the ball relatively well. So, you know, hence they had a, a reasonable balance of possession there. And they probably had a lot more possession than us in our attacking zone um, in the first half there than we did. But we just managed to really step it on in that last sort of five or ten minutes in the first half. So getting on to the individual players now. So Chance, um, you know, I thought he had another really, really good game. You know, eight out of ten but a couple of uncharacteristic errors and just didn't quite get his hands on the ball as much as we've seen recently, but I think that may well have been planned. Um, 189 metres, 68 post-contact metres, you know, right up there with his best efforts. Um, but his tackle efficiency there, uh, 57% with one missed tackle and two ineffective tackles, was a little bit uncharacteristic for him. Only the three tackle breaks, no line breaks, uh, no line break or try assist this week. So it shows that we're sort of focusing our attack a little bit differently than we have been over the past few weeks where he was actually getting quite involved there. Um, but overall, like a solid game from the big fella. And if that's sort of you know, his um, slightly off game, then we really can't complain because it's still an 8 out of 10 for me. So Dallin, I gave him an 8. I think I probably could have gone a little bit harder on him because of the errors he made. But, you know, still 163 uh, meters there, tackle efficiency 75%, but yeah, three errors, two handling errors, but then we had the other side of it with three tackle breaks, one line break, and the try. Um, he was definitely highly involved in the game. It just, you know, it wasn't his normal polished self, but because of the effort errors that you know, both him and Montoya made, I couldn't get too too hard on him, but yeah, probably sort of a seven to, to eight there in reflection. I'm sure some guys might even mark him down further. Hopefully kind of has that one brain explosion game and then moves on and resets for next week because, you know, we know what their wings are like, so we won't really be giving them too much um, ball-off handling errors and the like. So Onwards and upwards for young Dallin there. Montoya, I gave him a nine. I think this was his best game in a few weeks, actually. He, um, he just seemed to get involved in the play a lot more. The, the ball came a lot more his way um, with Metcalf being involved there and a lot of the play coming to the left. So... Um, but just his energy and his, you know, his post-contact metres and you know, that overall metres were way up on what it has been over the past few weeks. So I gave him a 9 out of 10. 204 metres, I think he led us in overall running metres there. Tackle efficiency, 80%. Five tackle breaks, two line breaks, two tries. Just his energy and just his impact you know, completely took his opposition out of the game. So, um, you know, 
probably, like I said, his best game in weeks, and hopefully that's just a trend up now, heading into the back quarter of the season, because he's absolutely vital to us. Absolute brick out there. Um, does so much work for the uh, for the Ford, so not much more I could ask for him last night. Rocco Berry. Um, I've given him a 6.5. I don't think it was his best game. Um, you know, 84 metres was what, I mean, actually way more than Pompey, but that's about average for him there. I'm not sure whether it's actually a, a plan that our um, centres aren't taking as many hit-ups as they were earlier on in the season or not, but um, tackle efficiency 76.5 there with four missed tackles, two errors. But I think like he was sort of... Um, he didn't have too many of those glaring tackle errors where he rushed up or anything. It was just a case, you know, um, as I said, they're both of those centres being really strong and bouncing around a lot that kind of got palmed off a couple of times. But what I did notice is he is really aggressive in defence for his size. He put a couple of really good shots up under guys' ribs and drove them back. Um, you'll guarantee when he makes that one big hit like that, he'll always make the next tackle as well. So I feel like he's... Um, you know, while he's made a couple of missed tackles there, overall his tackle, his technique and his, his impact in the tackle is, is really starting to come along there. You know, one line break, one try assist, he's still really good at putting um, Dallin away. And like I said, that, that tap on whilst the blockhead Roach gave him a bit of shit about it in the commentary, I think that was the right play. And if Dallin had been in the position to take that um, tap on, he probably would have gone in in the corner, so... You know, 6.5 maybe a little bit um, hard on him. Some probably gave him less, but I still like him. I still think he's going to progress. Um, you know, if I was going to drop anyone to bring Ali Lotawa back in once he's he's ready, or maybe even bringing um, William in, it wouldn't be Barry for me. I'd probably drop Pompey. And speaking of Pompey, probably his worst game of the season. Um, I gave him a 5. I think some people might have even given him less. 57 metres is pretty rank for a guy his size. Um, tackle efficiency 70 there with four, uh, four missed tackles, six errors, four handling errors, just the one to try, um, tackle break, and one try assist there. Now he does still, you know, put on some depth little passes and so forth, but man, he just didn't get a lot done last night. His mind doesn't really seem to be completely in it. Not sure if that's a sign of, you know, fatigue. He's played every game this season, or you know, whether his heart's sort of a little bit mixed because maybe he knows he's not going to be re-signed or whatever, but. You'd think, you know, the the uncertainty of not being signed would make a guy play for a contract at another club. But, um, yeah, pretty disappointing from the big man. I'm not going to say he didn't try, but he just didn't seem to get into the game last night at all. So hopefully if he's playing again next week, he steps it up a level because, you know, he's going to be up there against Jesse Ramian again, I would say. So a very um, challenging um, game for him. Next up, Luke Metcalf. Best game for me in first grade for the Warriors so far. Um, could have probably given him a little bit more, but I still think, you know, if you really look at it, he's probably still got another 20 or 30% of growth in him. So that's why I only gave him a nine. Um, seven runs, you know, with seven or two tries, you know. That's a pretty good bloody effort. Tackle efficiency of 91.2%, which is great for a guy who's not huge, but he definitely stood up there and put his body in the way of some of the big fellas. One try assist. Six tackle breaks, two line breaks, one line break assist, and as I said, the two tries. Just outstanding to see how much running he did. Um, I think we saw, like I'll get onto in a second with SJ, we sort of, sort of a, saw a little bit of a change in the way we've used Johnson, um, getting Metcalf a lot more involved in there. He seems like he's you know, confident to start really um, not driving the team, but just sort of like demanding the ball in his hands more than he was, getting the ball at the right time. And we just saw just his little subtleties with his um, ability to really engage the line, put on put on those little double pumps. You know, the skip pass out there to Montoya for his second try was outstanding, but even for his first try, his little double pump there was the one who sort of got um, Madison to turn his shoulders in as if he was going to tackle uh, Metcalf here. And as soon as he did that, that meant we had the overlap outside. So... Really proud of his effort. Um, going to be a seriously um, interesting decision for Webby once um, Tamadi Martin comes back because we know he tends to favour the experienced guys, but I think going to struggle to take Metcalf out now unless someone gets injured. So well done to him. Yeah, showing at 24 years old that he is really um, you know, first grade material and I'm excited to see how he goes over the next couple of years. 
Sean Johnson, um, you know, when I put out the Warry um, you know, three, two, one points for players that are getting around across all my different platforms, only one person mentioned SJ this week, but when I went back and watched the game the second time, and I had an inkling the first time as well, he was so much in control. Um, I just think we shifted our attack slightly different than we have been. It wasn't so much SJ-centric. He was really driving the team around. He kicked outstandingly. His, you know, his distribution was great. But we had so many other guys in motion and so many other guys ball playing that it seemed like you didn't notice him there. You know, he had a couple of really good runs himself, but because he didn't get the tries, I suppose, this week or um, as many try assists, people probably didn't didn't pick him for the man, um, man, men or men of the matches <laughs> um, for the two, th- uh, three, two and one points. But I have a feeling he probably still got some um, proper Dalian points from the experts there. Um, seven out of eight with his goal kicking, including some from the sideline there. Running meters over 100 meters there from the big fella. That was really good to see. Um, kicking meters not as high as some of his his weeks have been, but at 434. But that's a good good sign that we aren't kicking from deep in our own half. Um, tackle efficiency 83. He just you know, continues to step up and put on those big hits. I think he had two missed tackles, um, but that was where he's being bumped off by big forwards. Um, had the two tackle breaks, but you know, just overall, I thought it was a really, really good, solid effort from him. Um, but just getting back to what I was mentioning about the um, the way the attack's flowing, we saw Dylan Walker, we saw Rick, uh, Mitch Barnett, we saw Tohu, all playing in that distribution role as well as Metcalf. So e- SJ was pretty much first receiver all night. It was the guys outside of him that were doing a lot of the, the running and the ball playing. So that's an interesting sort of variation. And, you know, we saw some really, really well-shaped um, plays, particularly that first try from Montoya. No one was going to stop that, no matter who we were playing. So that's a really good sign for me. we just got to learn to do it in the wet next. Right on to the big fellas. Adam from Noah Blake. Another 9 out of 10 performance for me from the big fella there. You know, outshone Junior Paulo quite, quite easily. Played 60 minutes this week. Um, 193, almost at the 200-meter mark again with 9, 89 post contact meters 26 tackles at 93 percent efficiency there two tackle breaks and the three offloads just a, a beast in the middle he attracts so many tacklers you know he has four guys on him every now and then and those times he can get that offload away it just gives the the second phase play so much room to move so couldn't ask for much more from the big man there um you know you could almost say that it was close to a 10 out of 10 because you couldn't actually ask for much more but I'm sure he's got bigger games left in him for the back up or back quarter of the season coming up. Bunty Afoa, um, he had a couple of stints there uh, for 36 minutes last night. I gave him a 6.5 because, again, I just still struggle um, with his involvement a little bit there. Just the 64 metres, 19 post-contact metres. You know, he just can't seem to bend the line. Um, he gets driven back in the tackle a lot, but again, 96.5 tackle efficiency for 28 tackles is still a good effort. But just the one tackle break, we've got to need more, particularly from a starting prop there. So, interestingly, um, he went off in the last three minutes there when we saw Tohu come back on. He sort of he got tackled by three guys, and there didn't see much in it, but they didn't actually catch it on the um, on the tally. So I had to go back and try and slow motion it. And it seemed like that he came out with some kind of facial or eye injury, that he basically stepped straight back from the ruck and then just stood there and the trainer came on and he went straight off within a play or so, never got back involved. So hopefully that's nothing serious because there are a few other injury concerns coming in for next week. So, you know, not bad from Bunty, but we just kind of need that extra one and a half points out of our starting prop. So hopefully he steps it up. Otherwise, you know, we might find once we get all of our players back, he could be the guy to drop off and Barnett goes into the starting prop role. Wade Egan, I thought he had another outstanding game. I gave him a 9 out of 10. Um, great to see him running a lot out of dummy half there. You know, 61 minutes and he ran for 72 metres. Did something to his elbow, and it's not the one that he had taped, so he could be playing with two broken elbows next week. He managed to play on for another sort of 20 minutes or so, so hopefully it's nothing too bad. Um, but you could definitely see him sort of favouring it there a little bit. But still, 97% tackle efficiency and 32 tackles with a broken elbow. That's a pretty good effort from the young man. One try assist, two tackle breaks. But more than anything, I really just like to see the, you know, the amount of um, speed he was shown on those runs out of dummy half. But just yet again, we're not able to link with him. 
you know, I think a couple of times Walker was close, but it was just a little bit too, you know, wide out. Every time he seems to get caught with the ball, where you see a guy like Harry Grant will always offload and get that second level of them, you know, um, or their second um, hit of momentum there with maybe another 10 metres from the player he can offload to. So if he can get that working, he's going to be really, really dangerous going into this back quarter of the season. So not too much to complain about with him. Jackson Ford. Geez, was that close to his best game for the club? And we've been saying that three weeks in a row now, just continues to get better. You know, he didn't have any errors last night, just that one silly penalty where he came running off the line a couple metres early. I gave him a 9.5. He played 80 minutes, ran for 203 metres, so the most out of all of our Fords. Half of that's off the back of that 70 metre run he got, and just maybe he's got some wheels once he gets through that gap. Um, he's just so much more involved over the past three or four weeks. You know, I sort of you know, was a little bit frustrated there that he was only running about 80 metres and didn't seem to be getting so many runs, but I think he had 18 runs or 18 hit-ups all up last night. Um, 33 tackles, I think he led the tackling count for us. One line break and the five tackle breaks. Not much more you could want from me. He's just really building that nice combination with our halves out on the edge there, putting him through those holes that he just hits with a level of intensity. So... Um, I thought he did really well because um, actually both, or all of our back rows did reasonably well containing their, um, their big rank, lanky um, back rows and Cartwright and particularly Lane when he came on. So well done Jackson, let's keep that up. Really looking forward to more of that because you might be carrying a few of the Fords if depending on how these injuries go for next week. Mitch Barnett gave him a 9.5 as well. Um, I've got to say, I preferred him once he went back to the middle. He's okay and on edge, but I just think he's really destructive when you get him playing in that middle in the in the proper 13 role. You know, he did a little bit of distribution there for um, when Walker and Tohu were off there playing in the 13 role, so it's good to see he's got the ball playing skills there. Great to see him get his first couple of tries last night. Um, you know, both full full on power efforts, nothing too flashy, just smashing his way over. Um, 64 minutes there for 183 metres, 97% tackle efficiency for 29 tackles, three line breaks, four tackle breaks and two tries. Not much more you could ask, um, you know, depending on what happens with our pack, he could end up in the front row next week, which would be good. Um, Curran will be back. Neocott is not back for another week yet, but, um, you know, it'd be interesting to see as long as, you know, Ford should definitely be fine. So him and Curran on an edge and look, maybe getting um, Barnett into the starting lineup, or depending on what's going on with Tohu's ankle, he may end up having to play 13. But you know, Tohu coming back on for those last three minutes looked pretty you know, free running there for someone out a bit of a crook ankle. So you'd imagine he'll be back. Well done, Barney. Best game for the club. And on the Ironman, Tohu. Whew, gave him a 9 out of 10. He only played 58 minutes. It's probably his least minutes, I think, other than when he did his knee. The first time there all season, um, 172 metres in just 58 minutes. You know, 30 tackles at 90% tackle efficiency. One tackle break, uh, three line breaks, one try assist, and one line break assist. Man, how good is that on that <laughs> broken old body of his man? His knees and now his ankle. Um, just his subtle hands. You know, when he digs into the line, he just pops up those little passes. Um, like the one he put away for uh, uh, Dylan's try. Absolutely outstanding. I honestly think this season he's the, the in-form 13. He's out playing Yo, um, out playing Murray, just an absolute linchpin of our team, so I really hope he's, he's going to be all good with his broken-ass body for next week. But, yep, another 9 out of 10 for the big fella. On to the reserve. So Dylan Walker, man, what an impact he had when he came on. After about 18 minutes, I think they took Bunty off. Just the, the speed and intensity he plays with in the middle. You know, just a genuine um, game changer. You know, I just can't wait till we can get to see, hopefully, him and Jazz get back on the field together with because both of their play, um, foot speed in the middle there, just crazy. He played the 41 minutes there. Um, he got that knock to the arm that they're sort of saying it's hopefully nerve not broken. But watching him during the um, the team song there, he seemed to be moving quite freely and definitely looked like someone who got a broken arm. So hopefully that's all good because we really, really need him next weekend. That um, intensity and energy he brings off the bench against the, the Sharks because they've got a pretty energetic bench and a pretty mobile four pack themselves. 25 tackles in his 40 minutes. It's not a bad effort and a half. 
um, at 80, 89% there. Three missed tackles though, um, but two tackle breaks and a try. Overall, a really, really solid effort from him. I only gave him an 8.5 because he went off kind of early and didn't play as many minutes as he could have, but uh, pretty outstanding to have him on the bench there. Ciro, not his best game ever. I gave him a 6 out of 10. Just played the 32 minutes, only ran for 37 metres. Tackle efficiency 72 for 16 tackles, but he missed 6. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what it is with it. He misses some tackles at times, that boy. Um, I kind of like him playing more at hooker than I do on edge at the moment. Um, you know, he he gives it his all, but I just don't feel he's quite up there with the impact that you'll get from a Curran or a Dylan Walker um, off the bench there. So, you know, I think he's going to have to step it up a little bit because if we get you know near quarterback, we get Jazz back, I'm not sure whether there's a place for Ciro in the team, so we'll have to see how he goes, but... Not his best night, hopefully he steps up again this week. He's got a bit of a knee issue. I'm not sure if it's the same one that's been strapped all season, but um, he hobbled off there. Not 100% not sure how that's going to sort of hold up next week, but no doubt we'll get an injury report tomorrow. Tom Ailey, you know, did okay. It wasn't a, a, an outstanding or you know mind-blowing effort from him. Just played the 28 minutes, 67 metres, you know, he just, at least he's got a bit of footwork and he's got a bit of intensity. He gets pretty low to the ground, so he makes his post-contact metres. I think he had something like 30-odd post-contact metres, which was more than Bunty. So, you know, he does bring that energy off the bench. He's got a high tackle efficiency. So they're 90% at, you know, 20 tackles made. Good, solid bench, you know, player to come off there. Freddie Lussick, um, I gave him a 6.5. You definitely notice when he came on, you know, he does have an impact. Only for the 19 minutes there when Egan went off. Um, I'm not sure if that was because of the elbow or just it was a planned move. Um, ran 17 metres. He had just the one or two runs, I think, there out of dummy half. 14 tackles at 82%, but he does make some of those count. Big shots on big boys. He's really good on the kick chase. Always one of the first couple of tackles there. Um, helps knock them back um, you know, from the first point of contact on those kick chases. So that was a real positive for me. Three missed tackles there, but again, that wasn't anything that was sort of costing us too much. Um, one line break and one try assist so overall how do we say it look if I just looked at the score you'd think I'd come out of this absolutely ecstatic but hey they had four guys out we've still got you know a bunch of guys out we haven't we haven't got Jazz we haven't got Curran we didn't have near quarter we haven't got Tamati Martin all four arguably part of our you know first choice team particularly the three forwards there so, you know, they had four guys out, but I guess when you, you know, Gutho would be like the equivalent of taking SJ out for us. Reben Camel get a, you know, close to take, equivalent of taking AFB out. So if you took those out, two guys out of our team, you'd see a huge difference as well. So you can only beat who's in front of you, but I think we did it. I think when we got that attack synced again, we've seen it a couple of times where we've managed to put it on three or four tries in the space of 10 minutes this season. If we can just get that level of intensity, but with a higher level of accuracy, a lot of teams are going to struggle with us. My big concern this week is going to be the, the injuries. So who have we got there? We've got um, Walker with his forearm. We've got Egan with his elbow. We've got Bunty with, I'm not sure what, an eye or something. We've got Tohu with his ankle and Siro with his knee. Um, shit, <laughs> we could have an interesting looking forward pack there. Um, like I said, Jazz is still not ready by all accounts and near quarter still out until round 21. So we've only got Curran to come back in. Sifakula's still out injured. So you may well see a guy like Going, maybe Laban, maybe Zion Mo, um, get a debut next week off the bench if a couple of these guys don't pull up okay. It kind of excites me, but not the ideal opportunity or ideal time to I guess to to be debuting. Even though it'll be home up against the Sharks, I think they're on equal points with um, the Panthers at the top of the Top of the table there now, just difference in point differential there. We proved that we could beat them over there. I think if we get a fast track at home, we can beat them at home too. But again, we're just going to hope that all of these guys who are injured hold up okay because I don't think we want to go in with a, without guys like um, Walker particularly and Tohu. So let's see. I'm a happy, content man. I said I'd take two points no matter how we got them. We got them in a really positive, um, you know, dominant way sort those errors next week few less missed tackles and I think we can get 
up over the Sharks. It'll probably be another close, high-scoring game. We get those two points. We're well and truly in the top six, probably close to the top four. Let's do it, boys. You've got a whole week to prepare. It's a Sunday game. According to my weather forecast, it's looking fine at this point. I'm really hoping to get up there if I can get over this bloody dregs that COVID's left hanging around with a nasal infection here. First ever game at Mount Smart. I'd love to see the boys go nuts and get the win. See you all next week. Thanks for watching.